Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with another video, baby, <clears throat> for Boomstick Critique. It's dark as shit in here, I can't really see anything, so please don't hate me, <laughs> it's darker than shit out here. But, uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've done another video, or at least a little bit. Usually I'm turning videos out like a mother effer, you know, I'm like, one, two, just video, video. But I've had a really bad fucking toothache pain for the last day or two, and it's really hurt me. But it's went, all, it's went away now, I took a lot of prescription painkiller so the pain has went away thank god you know man that's some horrible pain but uh so i figured i'd jump in finally get to these west craven reviews again man with vampire in brooklyn now vampire in brooklyn stars eddie murphy kadeem hardison uh um angela uh, angela bassett i think is how you say her name and uh john witherspoon now john witherspoon was in the friday films have you seen him in the he's in the friday films if you watch them uh, and, you, and you know who he is in those films, you'll know who I'm talking about now. <clears throat> now, Vampire in Brooklyn was the movie that Eddie Murphy had to do to get, out of his, to get out of his contract with Paramount. But from watching old interviews I've seen with him talking about the movie, it also seems like a movie he wanted to do because it seems like he was a fan of like old-style vampire movies and stuff. And I know Eddie Murphy jokes about the film now, talking about why it didn't do as successful as some of his other films, saying that when he walked out, when he had that wig on that he wears in the movie, he was like, people looked at him and said, man, get the fuck out of here. Like They kind of had that expression, which that's funny. Eddie's a funny guy. I'm a big Eddie Murphy fan. He's made a lot of shitty movies over the last couple of years, though. But every now and then, you get a decent one or a good one in there. But most of them's pure shit nowadays. But, uh... But uh, Eddie, this is this was made back when he was doing like R-rated, you know, edgy films, which is cool. I, I prefer this Eddie. This is pretty much the last R-rated edgy film he did. I think there might have been like two more after this, like Metro, and then one other one. I forgot the other one. But um, as far as this film goes, Wes Craven wanted to try something different. He wanted to do like a vampire, you know, comedy. So he decided to go with Eddie Murphy. I think Eddie Murphy was a good choice for this particular character. The pro um. Eddie Murphy, like I said, you know, he kind of disses the movie a little now, talking about his wig or whatever he had in the movie, about why the movie probably didn't make as much money as his other movies before this one. And, uh, you know, when a, when a movie fails and an actor really wants to do good that he's looking forward to doing or whatever, especially if it's a movie that he's excited about or something like that, in the future and years to come, they'll always make excuses like, yeah, that one, oh, that movie... You know, they'll try to play it off like they wasn't that big a deal for them or the movie wasn't that great or something. But you can't really trust what actors say. They just kind of they just kind of try to save face. If they just try to go with the public consciousness. Like if the public, if most of the public disses the movie, they try to, you know, go along with it and diss it too. As far as this film goes, though, this really is a film that I have seen online that it gets a low score on IMDb, like a four point, like either four or eight, which is, in my opinion, way too low for this film. As far as IMDb goes, in terms of their ratings, all their horror films have incredibly low ratings. This film, in my, in terms of IMDb ratings, would, deserves at least a 5 to me, or a 5.2. <clears throat> but, um, I know this movie is no masterpiece. Vampire in Brooklyn is not the second coming of horror comedies or anything like that. That's what you're hoping for. It's not. But, um, as far as this film goes... In my opinion, it's a two and a half star movie. A two and a half star movie. I think this is an all right movie. Nothing in this movie made me hate it or be pissed off at it or anything like that. It's an all right movie. Two and a half stars, like I said. At this movie's weakest, it's an okay movie. But keep in mind, though, I am a Wes Craven fan and an Eddie Murphy fan. So, uh, seeing him in a more edgy type role makes me like this movie a little bit better. So, in my opinion, this is an all right movie. Uh, for most people, if you don't like Eddie Murphy, you'll probably hate this movie, or if you just can't see Eddie Murphy playing any other roles besides the funny guy, then you will hate this movie. Um, <laughs> but I think Eddie Murphy did fine acting-wise in the movie as the vampire. He plays the characters like more suave and stuff and everything. Um, kind of like a New Age Dracula or whatever. The problem with the character, though, is it's Eddie Murphy. Uh, the problem with this film is it's a horror comedy. The film starts out with uh, like a, a ship arriving, you know, in Brooklyn. It's kind of like the opening of the book, or, or it's kind of like taken from the, the Bram Stoker's Dracula book. And the ship arrives. It's got Eddie Murphy on it. He's a wolf. You get a funny lines by John Witherspoon, who's like Kadeem Hardinson's uncle in the movie. Kadeem Hardinson like runs off from the ship, and uh, John Witherspoon gets on it. And you get the hilarious lines from John Witherspoon where he's like, Ahoy! Ahoy, motherfuckers! <laughs> Because nobody won't say anything on the ship. It's so funny. <clears throat> He's hilarious. I love him in this movie. He gets on the ship. He just finds all these dead bodies and shit. And like with their throats. Like with holes all in them and everything. They just like pop out of nowhere. So it makes you think this movie is going to be like. You know a, 
like hardcore on the the horror, but also really uh, uh, really good with the with the comedy as well. It makes it sets the tone for the movie to make it kind of like a darker themed movie where Eddie Murphy, you know, has killed everybody on this boat. So it makes it seem like it's going to be like a darker themed movie. This movie's main problem is its tone is like all over the place. Really, its tone is. Um, it doesn't really. There's no mesh to this film. Not really. It tries to be a horror comedy, but at the same time, it has scenes that are too intense or scenes that are too goofy. That's what it kind of suffers from. It can't find its balance. Um, sorry about that. But yeah, back to the film. So John Witherspoon's up there. He finds all these dead bodies and corpses and stuff. And Eddie Murphy shows up as a wolf, like friggin' jumps over top of uh, John Witherspoon and runs off. And then the wolf like transforms into Eddie Murphy. It's like you see Eddie Murphy's shadow on the wall. And then the shadow like transforms in Eddie Murphy, decent little, you know, scene. But uh yeah, it starts out like that, playing itself, you know, kind of serious, but at the same time it's got it's got the charm, you know, comedy type to it. You know, the wink wink, you know, at it, you know, going on. But then it gets to another scene where Kadeem Hardison is like running away from Horace Pinker or Mitch Pelleggi, I, sh I should say, having a cameo in Vampire Brooklyn is like a mobster or whatever, who uh, there's two of them, and uh Kadeem Hardison owes him money. And Kadeem Hardison really makes this movie for me. His comedy in this movie is hilarious to me. Sometimes it gets a little annoying, but 90% of the time in this movie, I am laughing my ass off this dude. But uh, he's in the movie, and uh, fucking these mobsters get ready to kill him. But Eddie Murphy shows up and, like, rips the dude's heart out. And you get a kind of a corny line where he says, put a little heart into it. Which, uh, I don't really, not a big fan of lines like that. And then this is when the movie gets kind of goofy, where Eddie Murphy, like, jumps and flies over top of another vehicle. And gets the other mobster guy and, like, rips his body to pieces. And he's, like, flinging body parts over top of the car and shit. Like, stuff like that. It's, like, too wonky. It's like a, a Warner Brothers cartoon. Doesn't fit with the, the mood the beginning of the movie has set up. Um, it's like the beginning of the movie set up a mood where it's going to be more like something like Return of Living Dead. Where the situation is going to be, you know, um, really extreme. So the comedy is going to flow from that. You know, having a, a, a vampire in Brooklyn. But instead, it, when it is Eddie Murphy like ripping the body to pieces and stuff like that, and slinging it over a vehicle, it's more like a scary movie type, wacky comedy type style. Then, but of course, Eddie Murphy chases down Kadeem Hardison and he fucking puts blood inside of his mouth, his own blood in his mouth, and transforms him into his his ghoul, which are like the the daylight guardians for the vampires. And, he, and this is hilarious. I love this. How Kadeem Hardison is like a zombie in the movie. He gets more and more decayed throughout the movie, and more and more of his friggin' body falls off. I just love it. And Eddie Murphy's like talking like, you will enjoy all of the pleasures of Gouldum. Uh, and then all at once his fucking hand will fall off, and it's like... <laughs> I just love that, and then later on he like steals a mannequin's hand and replaces it with his own hand. I love Kadeem Hardison in this movie. He cracks me the fuck up in this movie. Um, if it wasn't for him, I'd probably like this movie a tremendous amount less. The problems with the movie is that Eddie Murphy plays the character super straight. The vampire character is actually very serious, and that's the problem with the movie. Another problem is he comes to Brooklyn, Eddie Murphy's character does, because the vampire race is pretty much dead. They were all in the Bermuda Triangle feeding on people, which is why people disappear in the, in the Bermuda Triangle, which I like that. But some vampire hunters showed up, fucked them up. Eddie Murphy's the only one left, and now he's in Brooklyn. He's searching for, like, a Daphomir, who's like a half-human, half-vampire, who was born uh, between the bond of a human and a vampire, whatever. Uh, and she's in uh, Brooklyn. So he wants to find her so he can keep his race going or whatever. But at the same time, I'm thinking, if you just want to keep your race going... Uh, they mentioned in the movie that, like, vampires want to keep, you know, like, their race going, like, in the bloodline. Like, it's not just, like, a, a club where anybody can join. It's more of, like, an exclusive thing where they select certain people to be vampires. So he really wants to keep it in, like, the vampire bloodline by turning her into a vampire or whatever as well. But at the same time, his race is, is pretty much dead. He's the only one left. So why not just go turn a bunch of other people into vampires by biting them or whatever? You know, or a bunch of other people who you deem appropriate to be in your your group or whatever, people you select, you know, why not do that, and then go after this chick, I mean, shit, there's plenty of time, and he just kind of finds her, like, really quick, too, she's a cop, and she's played by Angela Bassett, who I really like, she's, like, uh, investigating the ship with all the murders on it, Eddie Murphy's coffin is on there, Eddie Murphy, like, gets on the coffin, and all at once he sees her, and he just automatically identifies her when he sees her, it's like they got a special link connection, she even has dreams about him and shit, and has, she has, like, nightmares and everything, uh, about certain stuff. They're more like premonitions, and uh, they end up coming true later in the movie at certain parts. Um, and uh, But he finds her, like, way too quick just by random accident. And then when she sees him, you get kind of this neat little effect where he, like, disappears, 
is like a like a, a ball of like white oh something or other like a spirit he just flies out of there real quick so they one of the things they give eddie murphy's vampire character like a fuckload of powers in this movie he has like super speed he can fly super strength he can like one-handed punch somebody through the chest and rip their friggin' heart out uh fucking um he can he even looks at it like a police dog that's barking at him because you know animals are automatically suspicious of vampires. And he just like looks at it and it explodes and flies up in there with smoke underneath it and falls in the water, which I actually thought was funny. Um, but he can do all that. And there's like this other dude in the movie. He can even transform into people. I mean, shit, like into animals and other people too. And he, there's like he wants to uh, get to get more information on her and everything, so he like kills this alcoholic creature that she goes and sees. And then transforms into the alcoholic creature, so you can see Eddie Murphy in like a disguise or whatever, dressed up as another character named Preacher Polly. But this is the problem with the movie is that the vampire character himself plays Eddie Murphy plays him so straight edge that he's just kind of like this hardcore vampire, like smooth vampire guy. And Eddie Murphy's acting is fine, his look is fine. I know Eddie Murphy joked about the wig, but really in the movie his wig is fine. But uh, Eddie Murphy as the vampire is really straight. I mean, he, but that, so you're thinking, why not just play the movie serious? I mean, fuck it, why even make it a horror comedy? Just play the movie seriously. That's one problem with the movie is Eddie Murphy plays the vampire so seriously that when he transforms into other people, he goes into Eddie Murphy mode. Then he becomes like the Eddie Murphy show, and he's like all fucking over the place, like playing like uh, characters who you'd like seeing like a raunchier version of the Nutty Professor or something. Fucking, uh, he's sitting there as the preacher, and he walks in the church. His head starts smoking, so he runs out of the church, and he gets up there, and he's preaching to everybody, and he's talking about how how great evil is. It's actually a pretty funny scene. Some of the lines he gets are funny, but it, th there's no mesh with the comedy of what he's doing with his vampire character. It's like, this vampire guy that Eddie Murphy plays would never do comedy like this. It doesn't make any sense with that character. It doesn't even make any sense that this character would even be trying to be goofy or funny like this. I mean, when you see him, it's kind of like he has like a sense of humor, but not like a stand-up comedian type sense of humor. This just doesn't mesh with the mood or the tone of the movie. It's like it just stops to do like an Eddie Murphy power hour and honestly feels like it should be in a totally different movie, the scenes where Eddie Murphy transforms into people do. And he transforms into Preacher, and he's talking about... uh. One of the, he's like pointing out somebody in, in the group at the at the church meeting or whatever, and he's like, take Brother Fryer for instance. He just said, hey, well, he was down at uh, Bushwick Avenue with a two dollar whore, and he goes, you can push a two dollar whore to the line. She ain't got no limits. I love that. I thought that was actually funny. Like I'm saying, the comedy doesn't mesh. It doesn't mesh with the tone or the vampire character in the movie, but it you do get some laughs out of it. That's what I like. There are some laughs in it, and I love it when Eddie Murphy's the preacher and he's like sitting there talking to everybody and then all at once he needs to get down from there and he's like he jumps off the top of the, the church building or whatever where everybody's down there like looking at him and he goes uh, look out y'all <laughs> I actually laughed at that I laughed at that I thought that was funny he actually is funny in these other type of roles like this he only does it twice in the movie but they completely take you out of the movie and feel like you're watching like some random other movie Another thing, the guy who plays, like, Angela Bassett's love interest in the movie, her cop love interest, you know, obviously she has to choose between life with him or life with Eddie Murphy or whatever, and shit. She has much more chemistry with Eddie Murphy. Her and Eddie, Mur Eddie Murphy are much better actors than this guy who... Alan Payne, I think, or whatever. The guy's not horrible at his worst. He's just okay. But he just comes off kind of bland every now and then because his character is, like, so underwritten because you just get that... Uh, that really bad weak dialogue where he like looks at Angela Bassett and he's like <laughs> he's like uh this uh this guy we just arrested had a gun pointed to your head you should have waited for me to make a move and she's like why and he's like uh because I care about you a little more than what I'm supposed to it's like that cheesy romance type dialogue you'd seen like a low budget or cheap rom-com or something like that um it doesn't fit and he feels underwritten and under underwhelmed not to mention at the same time as he's competition for Eddie Murphy's character. Eddie Murphy's character, like I said, has a tremendous amount of fucking powers in this movie. I mean, he is overpowered to the max. I mean, this guy can just look at something and make it explode. So I'm thinking, why, why does he just kill this dude? Why does he just kill him? He can just kill him in like two seconds. He points out in the movie that he can't change into the guy. Because the, he must find like a, some kind of evil type thing that a person does or something like that or sinful type thing before he can possess him or whatever. They have to have like an opening for him to be able to, to transform into him or whatever, or to absorb their thoughts or whatever for him to change into him. 
or into that particular person. And this guy's like squeaky clean. He doesn't do anything wrong. Another stupid thing is the character's, the cop's name is, is Detective Justice, which is the stupidest name. So bad that there's no way Wes Craven or whoever put that in there couldn't have known how stupid that sounded. Uh, that's horrible. It should have had a different name. But, yeah, at the same time, I'm thinking, well, yeah, you don't have to change into the guy to mess with her. Just kill him. Just catch the guy after he leaves Angela Bassett's place, and when he's heading home, just show up and rip his fucking head off. I mean, you can kill him in one hit, man. One hit. You can one hit this dude, or you can just, like, walk up to him, and he turns around and says, hi, just blink at him and have him fucking explode. He, Eddie Murphy's character is so powered up in the movie that there's no way he couldn't kill this cop in, like, a matter of seconds. It literally makes no sense. The real point of it is is that they have to have the dude last till the end of the movie with Angela Bassett, and they just couldn't come up with any reason why Eddie Murphy's character couldn't kill him until then. There's really no reason whatsoever he couldn't have killed him. And it doesn't make any logical sense that he wouldn't have killed him, because this guy is competition. He eliminates competition. It makes perfect sense. Uh, there's no reason why he wouldn't have killed this dude. It makes no sense. Another thing is you get like uh, this Italian restaurant or whatever where uh, Angela Bassett and her partner, Detective Justice, go <laughs> go into or whatever. Uh, and Eddie Murphy shows up there with Kadeem Hardison who's still falling apart or whatever. And his, his ear has actually fell off. And earlier in the movie he makes a comment like, uh, well, what about my fucking ear, man? And he's like, Eddie Murphy's like, ah, don't worry, you, you'll be okay. And then uh, Kadeem Hardison's like... Uh, what are you going to do, man? Put me in the monster union? Yeah, am I going to get donations from uh from, from Red Cross? And then Eddie Murphy grabs him like he's going to choke him. And then Kadeem Hardison goes, I meant Blue Shield, bro. Blue Shield. <laughs> I love that. I thought that was hilarious. Kadeem Hardison's really funny in the movie. It makes it for me. Another funny scene is when he's like sitting on Eddie Murphy's coffin. And he's like, man, you need to do something about this coffin, man. You can't fuck on this. You scratch your ass fucking on this thing. You need to get yourself a futon. Just lines like that from him just really make me laugh my ass off. He's really funny in this movie. In my opinion, he's hilarious. He makes the movie for me. Uh, and uh, fucking, uh, but yeah, Eddie Murphy shows up there with Kadeem Hardison. They need to get into the uh, the restaurant, of course. He wants to know what kind of wine and stuff like that uh, Angela Bassett likes. So all at once, this random mugger like shows up named Guido. Just throw it in there specifically so Eddie Murphy can transform into someone else and do another Eddie Murphy power hour type thing. And it's like this Italian dude. Eddie Murphy just kills him right in the middle of the street. And he's like, nobody saw that. He just kills him in the middle of the street and then transforms into him. Walks into the restaurant and is like waving his pistol around everywhere and shit. Uh, and one thing I did find funny is everybody starts bringing garlic in there. Of course, because it's an Italian restaurant, which is kind of eh, not really funny. It's just like a joke because there's, there's a lot of garlic in there. Girls, Italians love spaghetti. But at the same time, I like Eddie Murphy's reaction because he keeps knocking all the garlic away and he keeps going, What's with all this fucking garlic? Next person who offers a fucking garlic product is going to get one in the ass. I, I like that. I thought that was funny. But yeah, they end up arresting Eddie, uh, Eddie Murphy's Guido character or whatever. But at the same time, once again, the Guido comedy in the scene like that feels out of place in the movie like it shouldn't be there. And they take him to the police precinct. He manages to get away um, and fucking... Um, Another thing about the movie that I didn't I didn't really didn't really gel right is there's another scene in the movie. All the killings Eddie Murphy does in the movie pretty much are all really wacky and over the top. And then there's this one killing where he kills like Angela Bassett's roommate, but uh, he kills her like behind closed doors or whatever. He's pretty much slept with her. And after he slept with her, he like brutally kills her. But you don't really see it. It like cuts to Angela Bassett like painting and stuff. And then it cuts back to where Eddie Murphy's like scratching her all the shit. It's done like really intensely. Like you get the idea that he's like brutalizing her or whatever. And it feels like way out of place in the movie. The scene is like really intense. And then you get like this real horror sounding music with fucking like a, a blood like leaking out of the keyhole to the room. And it's like, what the fuck movie is this now? It's like transformed from a wacky comedy, vampire comedy, into like this hardcore horror movie, intense horror movie. I mean, the scene's not like overly graphic, but it's really intense. feels really fucking out of place. It's like the movie just has real trouble deciding what it wants to be. My opinion, this movie would have benefited from just being a funny uh, vampire comedy. Uh, it could have had really hardcore kills, but at the same time, it could have been funny if they would have made like the vampire... Uh, charismatic and funny at the same time, but Eddie Murphy doesn't want to play him funny, which completely defeats the purpose of fucking casting Eddie Murphy. But at the same time, Eddie Murphy's acting of playing the vampire serious is fine, but because he doesn't make him like really funny at the same time or give him a real good sense of humor, he feels fucking out of place when the, the comedy starts happening, uh, when he transforms into other people. He feels out of place. 
And then because some of the death scenes are so wacky and over the top, when you get to that one intense death scene, it's like, what the fuck's going on, movie? What kind of movie are you? What do you want to be? It makes no sense. There's no logic in it. It's all over the place. And I really think that it's like this because there was four different writers on this movie. Four writers. And I think they just fucking, everybody, I think it probably originally started out as like an, an Eddie Murphy vampire horror comedy with Eddie Murphy as the funny, you know, charis, charismatic vampire or whatever. Uh, and then all at once it just kept getting rewrote and rewrote because Eddie Murphy wanted to play his character straight. So they just kept rewriting it and rewriting it, but still trying to keep the comedy in. And so all them, the rewrites and everything, they just finally got done with the script and it was just probably like a big... Um, Algamation of like all the different ideas and scripts that they had before where it just came out as a giant clusterfuck but still when the movie even when it goes into the Eddie Murphy power hour at least you get some good funny jokes in there uh, every now and every now and then and then there's this uh, Zacchaeus Mokai plays this vampire hunter he's only in like two scenes in the movie he's completely worthless to the movie cut him out no point being in the movie none um, one thing leads to another uh, Eddie Murphy takes uh, Angela Bassett uh, out and bites her on the neck, turns her into a vampire. Uh, he finally gets her. She, he wants her to be his mate, you know, his vampire queen or whatever, his bride. Um, but she doesn't really want to do it. Uh, Eddie Murphy's makeup when he goes like full on vampire where his face is like all fucked up is done by, I believe K&B did the makeup effects for this. His makeup looks good. I like his look. And in the more intense scenes, scenes where he plays like the more intense vampire or whatever, um, he actually doesn't do too bad. I mean, every now and then when he's the vampire and he's trying to be more intense, it's a little, little off just every now and then. But this is the first time he's ever really played a role like this. Uh, so at the same time, I'm willing to let it slide a little bit, but he carries himself at least good in the movie for most of the movie as the vampire character. He actually is good for most of the movie. It's just that the tone of the movie is so fucking all over the place and it can't decide what it wants to be. It should have been like a high class horror comedy like Return of Living Dead with just a vampire showing up in Brooklyn, fucking shit up, uh, and then people having to deal with that, really. He didn't even really need the whole bride story and everything. He could have just had him show up there, him fucking shit up. Just had him, you know, coincidentally fall in love with some random girl and just take it from there and have, like, her friends or whatever or whoever start finding, or maybe her other friend who has a crush on her or whatever find out that he's a vampire and start trying to put a stop to it. You could have just done that and made it just a fun, over-the-top horror comedy splatter fest. Could have just done something like that. In my opinion, that would have worked much better. What we have here is pretty much a B-level horror film, a movie that has good intentions and every now and then has some pretty good funny jokes, but side characters make this movie more than the main characters, like John Witherspoon and Kadeem Hardison make this movie much more than Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy's fine in the movie, but because he's so unfunny, un-Murphy-ish un un in the movie, I should say, until he transforms into other people, which doesn't fit, that comedy doesn't fit the movie, uh, that he that he is becomes kind of the least interesting when everybody or or at least kind of lesser interesting I mean compared to Kadeem Hardison and John Witherspoon who are really funny and outrageous in the movie <clears throat> and Eddie Murphy should have played the character more funny with a sense of humor that would have fit much better more of a funny you know sense of humor type vampire would have fit but then after that not only does Eddie Murphy kill the girl like uh, Angela Bassett's roommate he friggin I mean he I mean, after he kills her, he takes her out and, like, crucifies her, man. And it's like, good gosh. It's like, you know, that's really, you know, hardcore for the movie. And I'm giving it points for that. But at the same time, I'm like, what movie is this? <laughs> what is this? Because it doesn't fit at all. And then you get to the end of the movie pretty much where he's, like, uh, got uh, Angela Bassett there wanting her to be his vampire queen. And he's wanting to get the hell out of town. Detective Justice shows up to the rescue. Zacchaeus Mokai shows up for two seconds. Eddie Murphy gets stabbed by him, but then I kind of like Eddie Murphy's reaction, though, where he's like, this is my heart, this is my stomach, this is my heart, this is my stomach. You should know the rules. <laughs> I kind of like that, and Eddie Murphy just kind of knocks him down, uh, which is funny. And uh, <laughs> uh, Eddie Murphy's ghoul gets, uh, I mean, Kadeem Hardison gets, like, his eyeball knocked out, and it falls on the ground, and some dude, and, uh, D Detective Justice, like, steps on it, and, uh, Kadeem Hardison's like, oh, shit, my eye! <laughs> I love that, and he's just looking worse and worse to the movie, it's so funny in the movie, and then fucking, um, so, and then Eddie Murphy takes, um, takes, uh, Angela Bassett, and he just disappears with her, and you think, well, it's gonna be hard, you know, for, 
detective justice to find him and he just like walks over like two feet and gets and just like hits against the wall a little bit and they're just like right it's a trick wall and then he just pushes it open and they're just like right, right next door and i'm like oh man come on that was way too fucking easy this dude can like disappear with people and go at super speed with people why didn't he just fucking like fly like 10 blocks away or something man or some shit like that why do you even go next door why not just get the fuck out of dodge or something just head like two or three houses away, kill some random people or something who are in that particular place, rip their off, rip all their fucking heads off or something, and then, uh, and then friggin' make her drink one of them, make her, you know, take blood from one of them. But no, he just goes like right next door, so I'm like, stupid shit. And then Detective Justice gets in there, Eddie Murphy shows up, and Eddie Murphy's like kicking Detective Justice's ass, but Detective Justice fights back, doing fucking kung fu where he jumps up and does like a kung fu kick and knocks uh, Eddie Murphy back into a wall he's not able to really hurt him or nothing though but he's at least able to slow Eddie Murphy's you know vampire character down so he knocks like Eddie Murphy back into a wall which at the same time he's doing kung fu kicks this is too reminiscent for me of Busta Rhymes and Halloween Resurrection it's not as bad as in Halloween Resurrection cause this movie here is a horror comedy or at least trying to be so it's intentionally over the top with him doing kung fu or whatever but at the same time it still feels a little eh. well the problem is, is it plays it seriously but at the same time it's not like over the top kung, kung fu like Buster rhymes was doing or whatever he doesn't yell like a retard like every time he does the kung fu like Buster rhymes did in halloween resurrection he's not like way yeah <laughs> i mean when he does a kick it's more realistic and natural but at the same time i'm like eh, i'm not really a big fan of people doing kung fu to beat up like vampires and stuff like that Unless it's like Jackie Chan or somebody I can completely buy doing something like this. This guy, it's like, eh. But at the same time, he's not horrible. He just, he just too underdeveloped. The movie feels too rushed. Like, it goes along too fast. It feels like it could have had more added to it. <clears throat> but anyway. And so Eddie Murphy manages to take him down. Because, you know, the guy can't really do much to him. Eddie Murphy takes him down. He wants Angela Bassett to bite him. But instead, she stakes Eddie Murphy in the gut. Kind of predictable, but at the same time, it, it works all right. She stakes Eddie Murphy in the gut. Eddie Murphy falls over dead, and you get to see, like, this, you know, super vampire makeup on him or whatever, where he's, like, this horrible-looking creature or whatever, uh, vampire-wise. And it's actually pretty good makeup effects. Once again, good makeup effects. I like the look. I wish I could have seen more of that look in the movie. Uh, so just, you know, standard Eddie Murphy. Make him, like, when he kills somebody, I wish they would have made him, like, go all out like vampire or something. Really creepy-looking, you know really fucked up but at the same time give him like a really over the top sense of humor when he's doing it i think that would have worked in the movie's favor more but um but uh yeah uh so when he he falls over into the casket and he kind of just fades away in the smoke eddie murphy does after he's dead and i'm kind of like kind of a weak vampire death he just kind of fades away in the smoke and so angela bassett and uh detective justice or alex payne whatever his name is i mean his real name i think it's alan payne i'm not for sure uh, but they're fine, they kiss, you know, happy ending, predictable, but, you know, this movie never really tries to be anything, like, more than what it is, it just plays it really safe in terms of what it is. Honestly, I would almost rather have seen Angela Bassett hook up with Eddie Murphy, because he's got so much more charisma than this dude does, because this guy's character is so underdeveloped, I mean, he works okay in the movie, but he's so underdeveloped, his character is, that I would almost rather see, uh, fucking, um, uh, Eddie Murphy hook up with her, really. But anyway, so you get that out of the way. Eddie Murphy's, like, spirit, like, flies out of the window of the apartment as a bat and, like, disappears into the night or whatever. And he drops a ring down on top of the limousine where Kadeem Hardison is in. Now, Kadeem Hardison has been serving Eddie Murphy through the whole movie. So Eddie Murphy pretty much wants to reward him. So after Eddie Murphy's dead, Kadeem Hardison takes the ring, puts it on. He's, like, posing with it like that, which is pretty funny. I kind of like that. And then the fucking ring, like, causes him to start jerking and shaking. And it's like, you know, it's predictable something's going to happen to him. But whatever. But, I mean, when he puts the ring on, it's predictable something's going to happen to him. And all at once, he transforms into a super fly vampire, too. And he's sitting there, and he's, like, uh, he's filling up his, his, his dick. And he's, it's, you know, he's like, shit, it's huge, man. Uh, Max, uh, Max, me and Eddie Murphy's vampire character, he's like, man, Max said being a ghoul had benefits, but damn, <laughs> I like that, I thought that was funny, and, uh, he looks at, like, John Witherspoon, and he's like, there's a new vampire in Brooklyn, or something to that effect, which, uh, which I actually liked, 
because I like, I mean, it, it doesn't really, some people I've heard complain, like, it sets up for a sequel, oh no, I never felt like this set up for a sequel, I never felt like that, I thought, to me, it just felt like the main story is over with Eddie Murphy's, you know, Maximilian vampire character, and this is just, you know, like the, just an ending joke, just a funny joke to leave the movie off on, you know, just a little, you know, cute little joke to leave the movie off on, and Kadeem Hardison is now, you know, a master vampire too, or whatever, just a little funny joke. Uh, to leave the movie off on. It never felt like a hook for a sequel to me. This always felt like a, a self-contained story to me. But yeah, all in all, I'd give it two and a half stars. The movie never does anything to like really piss me off. It's nowhere near as bad as something like My Soul to Take, also directed by Craven. Craven is one of my favorite horror directors, but My Soul to Take is horrible. It's nowhere near as bad as that, and it's definitely nowhere near as bad as Hills Have Eyes Part 2 either. It's nowhere near as bad as those movies. This is one of Craven's like... Lower movies on his totem pole, but not like in the horrible area, like Hills Have Eyes, Hills Have Eyes Two, or My Soul to Take, because at least the side characters in this are entertaining. And every now and then, you get kind of a little funny scene. So this is like an all right movie. It's like a two and a half star movie. It's a passable time. It's like a. It's. I mean, it's a time waster movie. It's an all right time waster movie. A f a funny kind of kind of funny little way to kill two hours. It's all right, especially if you're an Eddie Murphy fan. It's an all right movie. Nothing to write home about. Uh, Craven definitely rebounded later with Scream. Uh, this movie really, I think, really gets the dog down on a lot because it's sandwiched right between New Nightmare and Scream because it came out right in between both of them. And I'll just say it's nowhere near as good as those two movies. But this is not a horrible movie. Like I said, it's an all right movie. It's a time waster. It's like an, uh, it's like an, a, a kind of a semi fun kind of a semi little fun way to kill two hours really nothing uh, amazing about the movie nothing great it's just like a semi little fun way to kill two hours because the side characters have little funny jokes every now and then but definitely not one of craven's best or even better movies uh, and not a good movie either but an all right movie meaning i can watch it and have a few chuckles when i watch it and then after it's over I'd be like yeah well okay it's over eddie murphy was all right what else is on? You know, one of those kinds of movies. It falls in the lower section of the Craven movies, but not at the rock bottom. It's kind of like, it's kind of like you got the top Craven movies, then you got like the the middle Craven movies, and this one is like just itching like right up towards the middle, but not quite there. It's kind of like right in there. It's not in the good middle section, but it's kind of like right underneath the good middle section, like the all right section. So yeah, all in all, Vampire in Brooklyn. It's an all right movie. Nothing to write home about. Nothing I would watch over and over or anything. Um, but I would say if you, if you get bored, you've seen all of Craven's like other major movies and even his good movies, and you want to see something else he's done that's not completely bad, but not amazing either, then I would say check out Vampire in Brooklyn. It's, it's all right. I'll see you guys again with the next review.